Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So in this video we'll be seeing another application of De Moivre's theorem to a question. So let's have a look at this question here. Simplify 1 minus cos pi on 7 plus i sine pi on 7 all over 1 minus cos pi on 7 minus i sine pi on 7 and all this is raised to the power 7 leaving your answer in exact form. Okay, so first let's have a look at this expression here and then we'll try and simplify that and then raise it to the power 7. Okay, so we have a look here. Now, if we were going to raise this to the power 7, we can't do that using De Moivre's theorem straight away because it's not in the cos plus i sine form. We have this extra 1 here. So we need to think of a way in which we can eliminate this one but still have cos plus i sine. Okay, so the way that we do this is we look to see what's another expression for cos that we can have a 1 in it, so that we can have 1 minus 1, which will cancel out our 1s. And so if you remember back to your double angle formulas, you should remember that, well, first of all, sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cos theta. And you remember we had three different ways of writing cos, square, uh, cos 2 theta. And the one that we're going to use is the expression that has a 1 minus something. And you should remember that that was 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Right? And the reason we want a positive 1 is so that when we have 1 minus this expression, these two ones will cancel. Right? So we want to use this. Okay, now, we want our 2 theta to be pi on 7. So that means, if we look at sine of pi over 7, that's going to be 2 times sine of half of that angle, which is pi on 14, times cos of 14, not 17, times cos of half of that angle, which is pi on 14. And in a similar way, if we have cos of pi on 7, we think of that as 1 minus 2 sine squared of half of that angle, which is pi over 14. Okay? So for this expression here, we're going to have 1 minus, now what is cos pi on 7? Cos pi on 7 is this expression, so 1 minus 2 sine squared pi over 14 plus i times, now sine of 2, so rather sine of pi over 7, that's 2 sine pi on 14 cos pi on 14. Okay, and we have that, now we can do pretty much the same thing, this is exactly the same as the top, we just have this as a minus instead of a plus, so using the same method, this is what we get. Okay, so now we can go ahead and simplify the numerator and denominator. So we're going to have minus 1, or 1 minus 1, which is 0, and then minus times minus 2 sine squared, which will be positive 2 sine squared pi on 14. And here we have 2i sine pi on 14 cos pi on 14. Okay. And similarly down the bottom we have 2 sine squared pi on 14. Now we have a minus 2i sine pi on 14 cos pi on 14. Okay, now we look to try and do some cancellations. Alright, so up the top we can factor out a 2 sine pi on 14 from both of these terms, and we can do the same thing on the bottom. So let's do that. Let's factor out 2 sine pi over 14. Here we're going to be left with sine pi on 14 plus uh, this will be i cos pi on 14. Alright, and that's divided by, again we can factor out a 2 sine pi on 14. We're going to be left with 
sine pi on 14 minus i cos pi on 14. Okay, and of course we can cancel these two terms here. So now we're just left with this expression. But we can't apply de Moivre's theorem to this when we raise it to the power 7 because this is sine plus i cos. But remember, we need to have it as cos plus i sine. So how can we manipulate this to get it in the form of cos plus i sine? Okay, so uh, you might recognize that when we have i, we have i squared is minus 1. i cubed is, well, that's i squared times i, which would be minus i. And i to the 4, well, that's i squared all squared, which is minus 1 squared, which is 1. So we're going to use these facts here to manipulate this expression in order to have it in the form of cos plus i sine. Okay. Now, we have an i here. Let's say that we uh, change this i to a minus i cubed. Ah, uh, yes. So we have sine. Oh, and the sine, we have a 1 out the front of sine, so we can put that as i to the power 4. So i to the power 4 sine pi on 4. Uh, not, not i cubed, here this will become an i, in the next step it will become an i cubed. Right, so we have this, oh that's 14, not 4. And we can do a similar thing here. We'll have i to the 4 out the front of sine pi on 14. Because remember, i to the power 4 is 1, so timesing anything by 1 is itself. Now here we have a minus i, which is i cubed. So we can put this as i cubed cos pi over 14. Alright, now, in the numerator, we can factor out an i. And the reason we think to do this, the reason that we want to factor out this i, is so that we can have cos as the real part, and sine will still be related to i, so sine is now the imaginary part. So we can factor out an i here, and we get cos pi on 14, plus i cubed, sine pi on 14. And I'll do this in, I'll make sure I show all the steps here so that you fully understand. And we factor out an i cubed on the bottom, so that we can get cos uh, not related to i, so now it's a real part. So cos pi on 14. And when we factor out an i cubed from here, we're going to be left with i sine pi on 14. Okay, let's get another bit of paper. Alright. Now, we can cancel one of the i's here, and we'll be left with... Uh, this i here will cancel and we'll have i squared on the bottom, so might just write it as a coefficient there. Okay, and so now we have cos pi on 4, 14, not 4, pi on 14. Now remember, i cubed was minus i, so we can write this as minus i sine pi on 14. And here we still have cos pi on 14 plus i sine pi on 14. Okay, let's move that up a bit. Alright, now this still isn't quite exactly as cos plus i sine. But remember, when we have a minus in between these, this minus can be moved into the coefficients. And you can see this from two different ways. You can see it from a direct application of de Moivre's theorem using a negative power. That's one way. Or you can see it as cos and sine being even and odd functions, respectively. So on the top, we'll get cos of minus pi on 14, which is still equal to cos pi on 14, because cos is an odd function, plus i sine of minus pi on 14 which is equal to minus i sine pi on 14, because sine is an odd function. Okay, and we still have on the numerator, on the denominator rather, the same thing.
Okay. Now we're we're looking good. We have this in modarg form and we have this in modarg form. So now we can use our division in modarg form, which is just subtracting the arguments. Okay, now let's simplify this. Well, this is 1 over i squared, which is 1 over negative 1. So that's just negative 1. So that's outside of cos. Now minus pi on 14, minus pi on 14, plus i times sine of minus pi on 14, minus pi on 14. Okay. Let's simplify this. That will become minus outside of minus pi on 14, minus pi on 14 will be uh, minus pi on 7. And so this is what we get. Okay. So that there is a simplification of 1 minus cos pi on 7 plus i sine pi on 7 over 1 minus cos pi on 7 minus i sine pi on 7. But we want this expression raised to the power of 7. So, we can say, therefore, therefore, 1 minus cos pi on 7 plus i sine pi on 7 all over 1 minus cos pi on 7 minus i sine pi on 7 or to the power 7 is equal to this expression raised to the power 7. So we have minus cos negative pi on 7 plus i sine of negative pi on 7 and all this is raised to the power 7. Okay, now the way we apply De Moivre's theorem is the uh, modulus here, which is well, this is not really a modulus, but this minus 1 is raised to the power 7, so we're going to have minus 1 to the power 7. And now we can apply De Moivre's theorem and bring the power into the argument. And so we're going to have cos of 7 times negative pi on 7 will be minus pi, plus i sine of minus pi. Now, you could go ahead and add 2 pi to this, which wouldn't affect the value, but it would bring it within our principal argument uh, range, but that's not quite necessary here. If you think about minus pi, what it is uh, physically, this is what we're doing. We're going clockwise pi radians, and when we do that, we'll get to this point here, which is minus 1. So remember, this is our real axis and this is our imaginary axis. So when we go across negative pi, we're going to get back to the real axis, but we'll be on the negative side of the real axis. So this here is negative 1. So we're going to have negative 1 to the power 7 times negative 1. Okay, what's negative 1 to the power 7? Well, negative 1 to an odd power is negative 1, so this is negative 1. And here we have negative 1. And so this messy expression up here comes down to negative 1 times negative 1, which is simply 1. And that's the end of the question. So the trick here was to recognize that we can't apply De Moivre's theorem to this directly. We need to simplify it by finding nice, uh, a nice way of writing cos pi on 7 so that we could eliminate this 1 out the front here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to subscribe. Thank you.